I love robots and so do other people and quite often people contact me and ask me to take a robot somewhere. Sometimes it's to do a comedy sketch on video, sometimes through a music video, a DJ performance or to go and talk about STEM education at universities and science festivals and things like that. And the problem is I've got lots of robots but a lot of them aren't ready to go so Open Dog is quite popular of course but that's really an R&D effort and it's really hard to transport and at the time of making this video it doesn't actually walk along. I do have other robots as well, like the robot arm, which is pretty good, but doesn't really look like a robot character. We've got Robot X that walked along once, but I never managed to really get that to walk properly, and it's quite temperamental. Robots like Ultron are in the background for most of my videos, but I haven't powered Ultron up for about two years since I finished the series, and basically it's Ultron from Disney, so a lot of people ask me for a robot for some sort of performance, but actually they don't want a Disney property, so they ask me for a new head, some spare arms, can we paint it green? Oh, by the way, we need it next week. So I've decided I'm going to make some generic looking human torso robots which I can basically have ready to go. They're going to be made super robust, super reliable with a number of data interfaces that we can interface to for puppeteering or recording and playing back motions and then basically I can build a travelling robot show or they can be customised or used in various other applications. And that looks something like this. So we're going to have this thing on a really robust steel stand and it all disassembles for transport. Of course the problem with Open Dog is it's all one piece and the legs don't come off so it's really hard to transport. This will all come to bits and go in the back of my car. And we're going to basically have a torso. The arms are really just placeholders for now but we'll have all of those degrees of freedom. So we'll have a shoulder that pivots outwards and can reach all the way up. And of course we've also got that shoulder motion as well. So the uh, top of this is actually really the the rib cage. So this is the bottom of the rib cage and the abdomen will be somewhere down here. It doesn't have any legs. It could have fake legs. I haven't really decided yet, but for now we're just going to build a torso. So we've got these actuators which are going to be very similar to the open dog actuators which are ball screws and brushless motors driving with belts which will allow that torso to tip as well as sideways. It will also allow it to tip front to back and of course the combination of those two actuators sliding up and down with rose joints and these push rods uh, will be able to make that body swivel all the way round. So there's quite a bit to do here. We've got this kind of universal joint in the middle which has got these bearings and some bars all the way through that hold that body and we've got space which I haven't designed yet for more actuators that push the arms up at the back. But for now I'm going to start building it and we'll work our way up and I think that's going to be fairly okay. So let's cut up some metal. Right, there it is. So that looks pretty substantial to me for the base. So all of this unbolts, of course, so that we can take the stand to pieces. We can take these sides off that have got adjustable feet on so that we can get it perfectly level. And this piece bolts onto the upright. And the upright, of course, bolts to the bottom of the robot, which is this nice piece I've welded up. And that means that I can adjust the height. If we wanted it to be shorter or taller, we could just adjust this single upright piece without having to cut anything off because it's just one individual piece with bolts on. I've also started the top here with this interesting gimbal piece. And that piece allows the robot to pitch and to roll, but not to yaw, so it can't rotate on the spot. So it keeps it locked to those two axes. And eventually this piece, which is the spine effectively, will also fit onto that so that the whole body can move around in this sort of motion. And as I said, this is basically representative of the bottom of the rib cage. So it's gonna stand, yeah, a bit taller than I am, so this should be quite tall and they can look over a crowd and so on. And of course we can still adjust that height if we need to. So now it's time to get this actuator assembly done with the rods and everything so we can hold the body up before we build on the top. So this is two ball screws and these are mounted on an aluminium plate as they were with the Open Dog project.
So that is bolted on the front with two bolts that go through just one skin of the box section here. So just poke the nuts up and down. And obviously we've got the ball screws mounted on here, which as they turn, of course, with motors at the bottom, these pieces will rise up and down and they'll push this up and down on each side. So now we just need to make the linkages and the thing that sits on here, which actually holds that end of the linkage. So we need to make this linkage with rows joints at each end, but at the bottom we need something to hold it. So basically that's going to be a piece of aluminium, which gives it a nice brace and also a 3D print which is going to be made of quite a tough material and that also holds two V wheels that run in the slot on that extrusion to stop the whole thing swiveling round. Yes, we're printing Tormund Alloy 910, which is in this seal box with some silica gel because it's hydroscopic, it's nylon and we're printing it on the Lulzbot Mini 2 and I've got 110 degrees on the bed and 250 on the hot ends. And my box is just a stop draft, so I've got 29 degrees centigrade which is more than warm enough to stop that warping. So we're printing with just a glue stick on the reverse side of the bed. So it's just on glass. The PEI is on the other side because you can turn the bed over on this printer. So we've got um, about 30% infill and we've just got a bit of glue stick and quite a big brim, about 20 millimeters to help stick that down. Obviously the bed's quite hot and it's quite warm in my box. So it uh, keeps everything nice and warm and that print should come out perfectly. So there's one that's been printed with the brim still stuck on and there's the one I've cut the brim off and that print's come out pretty well. So we've got these aluminium plates that they sit on and that gives a bit of brace. So we're gonna bolt through the ball nut and that piece supports the rose joints and on the other side we've got space to put our v-wheels on so both of those are installed and they're bolted through with three bolts so now i've got these temporary pulleys which are plastic but they're going to be metal eventually so obviously as i turn the ball screws these go up and down and the v-wheels run neatly in the slots so i have installed a shim in here behind the 4020 extrusion and in between the plate and the extrusion basically that makes that extrusion be the right width so the center of the extrusion is the center of the ball screw and everything aligns properly. So I've bolted in my rose joint there, which of course can move this way and it can also move this way a little bit, which is more than it needs to do really. And I've got a 10 mil bolt, which is just actually bolted into the nylon. There's no nut on the back for now and that holds quite tight. So I think that's gonna stay in there. Some point I'll put a lock nut on. So there we are, rose joints at both ends. And now obviously if we move these both down, it goes down and if we move one up and one down, it should lean side to side and obviously it'll do it much faster than that under the control of brushless motors and O-drives just like the open dog joints. So the next part of this is to build the upper body and that is another aluminium plate at the front with a piece of extrusion to attach cosmetics to. At the back we've got this T-shaped piece which is welded steel and between them they hold axles for the shoulder pivot there. And obviously we've got two more of these actuators and those are of course responsible for lifting the arm out like that. So we've got that axis of the arm We've got the rotational axis of the arm, but there will be one more axis which will involve splitting the upper arm so that it rotates and the whole arm can rotate. Right, so I've cut my aluminium plate, I've got my extrusion on, that's bolted onto the bottom of the rib cage here with two bolts. And then we've got this piece, which is the other welded steel piece. That's got a collar clamp at the bottom, so that should fit onto the bright steel bar. On the back, of course, we've got another aluminium plate that holds two more ball screws, one each side, and two more bits of V-slot extrusion with the offset again so that we can get another set of V-wheels to run in there, and those rods are gonna push the arms up. And those are my ball screws mounted in there, which of course are exactly the same as the lower body, and we'll have rose joints again that push the arms up on the pivot points here. So I've just started to prototype up the motor mounts here, which of course a belt drive onto the ball screw. These pulleys, I should say, are 3D printed and they're temporary. I'll be replacing them with aluminium ones. We've actually got O-Drive branded motors, which are 150 kV and they're really similar to the ones I used on Open Dog. And of course, we've got the encoder mount on the back there so we can accurately position them. These motors actually have a thermistor to monitor the temperature. I'm not sure if the plastic plates are gonna be okay. We might replace them with aluminium, but the rest of the mounts here are 3D printed. And of course, they're attached to that extrusion. No, it isn't a camera trick. There's really two of them. I've been building everything twice. And that means I can have two robots that are synced up with each other. So we could have two robots dancing behind a DJ or something like that. Or we can puppeteer them or sequence them separately so they can interact with each other or interact with the public or something like that. So quite a lot of possibilities there. That's all for this video. I think I've achieved quite a lot. So let's come back for part two and we're gonna hopefully put the arms on, get those pivot points on and talk about the other axis that we're gonna have in the arms. All right, that's all for now.